right? Watchmen. DJ Leroy. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. We got a nice little popping show. You know that, right? Always, always. Well, well this is an even more special because we are in the midst of what? Hispanic Heritage Month. That's a beautiful thing. Absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, today I was told, and maybe one of our guests will uh, make sure that I know it, but it's also, I understand, uh, Mexican Independence Day. Okay. okay. I so didn't we, know that. Yeah, so we could definitely find out. So let me read a little statement from our congressman, Congressman Espayat. Latinos contribute to the rich cultural heritage ingrained uh, in the American identity. As the single largest racial or ethnic minority group in the United States, making up 18.5% of the nation's total population, Latinos uh, represent a crucial segment of all facets of American life. Hispanic Heritage Month is a time of reflection and engagement to support Latino families across the nation and share stories of our significant contributions that highlight the beauty and diversity of, its nation, of this nation. This month, we honor historical Latino legacies such as Celia Cruz, Arturo Alfonso Schomburg, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Roberto Clemente, Esteban uh, Hotes, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, and so many more. I am proud to honor the history, culture, and influence of past and current Latino generations whose influence American politics, labor rights, education, music, food, and many other facets of our lives. Yay, yay, yay. All right? Okay. So you know what? As I say, let's get it popping, man. Mm -hmm. uh, we have actually a guest uh, interviewer, and that's the one, the only, Pablo Fernandez. Bring him up. Yes. All Come right. On. Yes. What's Welcome. up, Pablo? Uh-oh. I think you might be muted. That I was good. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Oh, Great. we are good. Thank my you brother. For We're me. good. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? Uh, I told you when I was out in the Rockaways, right? We used to have this uh, particular program called uh, Nifty. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, it was the National uh, Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship. They've, uh, they've, as they say, pivoted slightly. It's now the Network for Teaching uh, Entrepreneurship, and uh, they are, um, they are a great, great national organization. And I may have messed up that acronym, so they're going to correct me if I if I did. You know what? The first person I want to bring out is Liliana Pachardo. She's the Director of Development, Strategic Partnerships for NIFTY, Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Please bring her out. Hey! Welcome. Hi, everyone. Yes. Uh, thanks so much for having us. No, and it's you. correct, NIFTY, Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. You're See? Good. I love it. I love it. And uh, I actually, funny enough, I had spoken to this uh, gentleman, and he's out there on, as we call, the, that left coast. That is the one, the only, and that's Kenny Turner. Bring him out. He's the director of national post-secondary and alumni programs at the N Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Nifty. Hey. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up? Good evening. How's everybody doing today? Great. Good. Great. All right. All right. Good, my brother. Good. But you know what? Because remember, it's really, really all about entrepreneurship, small business development. That's what it's really about. So you, this show would not be anything with an, without Antonia or Tony Castro, because she is a 27-year-old Los Angeles native a Mexican entrepreneur, and she currently works with uh, Nifty as a consultant for its alumni programs. Hey, Tony. All right. All right. So, hola, you know, hola. Hello, everyone. <laughs> all right. This is, this is what I'm talking about. So Night Watchman. Uh, I, kn I know you're going to hang in there for, for a minute, right? So would you like to start off the questioning or, or or should we go to, of course, our guy, the one and the only, Pablo. Pablo, do you have some questions for our guest? Um, I'll let Night Watchman start. And, uh, <laughs> 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 well, well, let's start with Liliana. Um, tell us a little bit about Nifty. Um, what the organization is about, who they, what their focus is, and what you guys are doing currently. Of course. Um, so NIFTY, Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, we're going to go for NIFTY from now. You've heard it multiple times. Um, so we're a global nonprofit organization that provides high quality entrepreneurship education to middle and high school students 
from under-resourced communities. And then we also provide programs for college students and adults, which is why my colleague Kenny is on as well. And, you know, our goal is to really activate that entrepreneurial mindset and then also, you know, um, have unique learning experiences for students where they get to understand what businesses are, um, how to use those skills, tools like market research and such to be able to create a really great business plan and then pitch that to judges at the end of the school year and be able to compete for prizes. And so the students really come up with an amazing idea in their class that they really are passionate about, which then helps them. Um, you know, be even more uh, excited about being in this class and doing this um, either at, at their after school program in their high school and their middle school. Um, and it's a really great way for them to be creative and then also kind of put their voice and their creativity out there um, in the world and share share their amazing ideas. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, and Kenny, do tell me, because yes. you you started out as a consultant uh, w working in de various uh, programs here on uh, in the East Coast before yeah. actually landing there in the West Coast and doing stuff uh, with Nifty and also becoming a staffer. So please tell me about your journey. No, absolutely. Well, the journey the journey for me actually started in New York. You know, I'm, I'm in LA right now, but I was born and raised in New York, right in Queens, Farmers Boulevard, 134th <laughs> Avenue. And in that area growing up as a young, as a young person, young black man, you were always looking for uh, motivation, right? And so, right in that area, we had a lot of people who were just doing some unique things, you know, that, you know, it was queen. So, you know, um, you know, LL was from there and mm -hmm. uh, Damon John is from there and the Fubu oh, guys, yeah. you know, and we watched them kind of, uh, you know, them and others like really influence the culture with their entrepreneurial mindset. Right. And we didn't, yes. la we didn't label it that, right. We called mm -hmm. it hustle and we called it, their, <laughs> you know, they were doing their thing and, yep. you know, uh, but that motivation, you know, just watching and seeing the alternative, right. Was, mm -hmm. is really the, the, the under, the underlying, you know, motivation for, for me as an individual. And, and I would say everybody on this call is that we, we keep thinking about the neighborhoods and the communities we're from mm -hmm. and what solutions can we bring to uh, provide alternative ways of getting to success that it may not look the same for everybody. And so entrepreneurship or the entrepreneurial mindset provides those options for young people who might find themselves in situations where they feel like they have no choices or, you know, they have to go this route or this route. Um, you know, the beauty of this program, you know, and the work that we're doing and why I'm still in it is because those options are still relevant today. You know, what, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so, so that's why I meant, that's what got me in, right. That's what mm -hmm. took my attention, the tools we use, you know, um, you know, to, to get to those endpoints and those outcomes, you know, around entrepreneurship, you know, creating an environment that young people and, and, you know, college students and adults can be successful uh, in, in implementing their ideas, right. Is, um, you know, what we spend every day trying to think about, you know, how to, how to approach this a little bit differently so that we can really, really have those impacts. So, uh, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm West coast, but you know, re regardless of the coast, you know, <laughs> people of color are going through the same thing, you know? A absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. So yeah. that's what this is about, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know what? I often said and whatnot that I'm totally in awe of the entrepreneurial spirit because I, I have to say I'm a wage earner. You know, every two weeks, regardless of whether or not I, uh, how should I say, I do provide you with a good service or product, what happens? I get paid, you know? So so the hustle is something that I totally admire. I totally. So, Tony, you got to tell me about your journey. I mean, you're an entrepreneur, and now you're giving back as a consultant to Nifty. So tell me. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Let's see. It is a crazy journey. Uh, how much time we got? <laughs> um, no, it, it, it's really funny because I've done everything in Nifty from being a student, took the program in high school, um, and then created my own business at the age of 17. I was a senior in high school and then made it all the way to nationals. As you mentioned, I am Mexican, born in Mexico. Nice. I, am, I, I immigrated with my parents when I was only about a year old. And so um, it's a really funny saying, I'm not enough Mexican, but not enough American. However, <laughs> um, I'm a little bit of both, you know? And it, it's crazy because I always knew and understood kind of what Kenny was saying, the hustle. And I knew that I had to work and I had to make money for myself. Um, I started working by the age of 14 
whether that was in uh, as a server, a restaurant, if it was like retail or anything like that, even working in Santi Alley's, if you're from an LA, you know, whatever that is. Um, and so always worked. However, I didn't understand what business was. And I understood that I wanted to make money. And in my head, the way that I was raised up, it was through education and going to college mm. and getting a degree mm. and, you know, getting a good office job. That was what success looked like to me when I was growing up. However, when I got introduced to business and I was like, oh, hold up, wait a minute, this is it. This is what, what I'm thinking about. Um, becoming my own boss, you know, doing my own things and creating an impact. Uh, through NIFTI, I had the opportunity to then take the program, made it all the way to nationals, went to New York City for the first time. I was like a little lost sheep in the big world. And I was like, well, <laughs> this is intense. And, you know, understanding the, the community that is built with NIFTI. Mm -hmm. After I became an alumni, I then continued to participate, becoming a judge, a coach, uh, supporting my NIFTI office, and then... Uh, got to work with them for about mm -hmm. two years. Uh, I was I did something right that they kept me along, and, <laughs> and uh, Kenny had the great pleasure of of training me and uh, becoming a teacher. So yes. then I became a teacher, nice. and I not only did I took the program, not only did I help in the background and learned everything that happens, you know, behind the curtains, but I also now had the opportunity to teach. Nice. And there is nothing more that fills me than knowing and understanding that I was once where all of my students have been. You know, I was in their chair. I was growing up in the community that they're growing up in. And I knew then and there that that's what I wanted to do, to teach them not only about the hustle and the grind, but really the understanding of, yo, there's so much more that you can do. And there's all these opportunities out there in the world and you get to call the shots. So uh, as a consultant, my biggest work is really connecting the gap between the alumni and then the offices and all of the resources and all of the people that want to help and give back to our community and yeah. really being able to be that middleman of like, okay, give me, give me, and then give back to the alumni, the community, and really empower and teach entrepreneurship. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, Pablo, I certainly yes, do sir. know that you have a, of course, a nine to five, we know, but yeah. you also have this entrepreneurial hustle. So you have to tell mm -hmm. me about that particular drive that you have. Where does that come from? Um, I'm going to uh, copy Tony here uh, <laughs> because I also immigrated um, very young to the United States. I got here when I was about uh, nine years old. And you know, by the time I was 13, I was already bagging up groceries at the supermarket. And wow. again, going back to it, um, everybody that, that's part of the household that can work and can earn should. Mm. At least that's how we see it in terms of helping uh, our parents and lighten the burden. Now, um, I've always definitely saw education as a way to improve our situation. And so, um, you know, that is why I always followed uh, education. And I have been um, an entrepreneur one uh, or two times. I'm still working on a couple of new things. So uh, look out for that very, very soon. Now, I have a question um, for Tony, mm -hmm. and, and I guess anyone from Nifty uh, can answer. Since, um, you know, black and brown people, marginalized people do not have so much extra time to do, let's call it extracurricular things, although they are investments in ourselves, how do you increase uh, access and engagement when you know people are so busy working taking care of their families and so forth anyone yeah no i think that's a great question and that's the beauty of entrepreneurship and i think that uh a lot of people get lost in the aspect of you think entrepreneurship, you think making money and, you know, becoming a billionaire or making it big and stuff like that. However, entrepreneurship has to do a lot with passion and what you're passionate about. And I think that uh, it is it's an easy balance to know that if self-care is something very important to me, then that can be a business. And that can, you know, if I love to do something, I can make money out of something that I love to do. And I think, you know, when I'm teaching a lot of my students, you know, let's start a business as the curriculum is like, what do you what do you like to do? What are some of your hobbies and interests? And I think it's really about exploring how you can monetize something that you genuinely love to do. Entrepreneurship has to do a lot with 
you know, working very late nights and mm. the hustle and, you know, you never really get to clock out. It's always about the grind. However, it is beautiful when you have the opportunity to do something that you love and something that you're passionate about and something that really brings joy to you and still add an, as an added bonus, get to monetize it and make money out of it. So I think that it doesn't really matter how busy you are. Um, it's really about perspective. It's really about, okay, what is something that I like to do? And nothing that is worthwhile comes free, right? And so I think that Agreed. it is about struggle and it is about balance, but it's always about, you know, making time for it and understanding that uh, the simple pleasures of life, the simple things that can bring you a smile can also bring you money. So I think that that's the way that I Agreed. see it in perspective. Okay. Uh, Agreed. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love that. Any, anyone else on that? Yeah, uh, I would add, you know, for Nifty specifically, when we work with schools, it's part of the students' curriculum. So it's part of their oh, daily wow. course. So it's not an extra that curriculum that they have to do. Some of our schools are able to do that in their schedules. Some others do offer it as an after school program. And then over the summer, we have different programs. We have this camp, we have startup summer for students who've taken Nifty and now are ready to think about how do I launch this business, right? What do I need and learn and take a little bit more of an advanced course with us. And during those programs, because they are, like you said, Pablo, missing out on a job that they might be doing, we do offer a stipend. We do offer them some startup funds so that they're able to, and then a competition as well, so that they're able to kind of see it as, oh, I'm not missing out so much on this, even though it may not be the same amount, but I am also doing something I'm passionate about, like Tony said. So I think, you know, we tried really to understand where our students are coming from and all of the competing priorities for them, right? And um, and really help them and, and help them um, with, you know, asynchronous courses, everything that we can do to really make it easy for them to have that access. Mm. And, and wonderful, Lily, wonderful. Because uh, I know that she, remember, is a director of development. So uh, um, and these partnerships <laughs> with, let's say, already established companies, especially now with those guys out there in the West Coast, are we talking about uh, tech firms and whatnot who may also believe in the vision of Nifty? Yes, of course. So, you know, uh, the Bay Area and Los Angeles are, are really big markets for us, as well as New York and um, Chicago and Southeast. And so, you know, we have some partners like PayPal, for example, who support us bringing in volunteers into the classrooms or virtually for the past couple of years and bringing students also to their offices. Right. And they support us on a national level and now globally where we're able to match up cities uh, where they have people as well or they have offices. And in the past, we've done these huge field trips where we get to bring in students and they get to see themselves and see, wow, like I can really work here. And it's not just about, hey, here are the coders or the programmers, you know, here's the marketing department, here's finance. Mm. And this is how all of these skills you're learning at Nifty and the mindset, how they practice them every single day at work, right? Whether they are in the tech specific department or whether they are in some of the more, um, you know, business departments like marketing and such. Um, and so those experiences are really valuable. You know, City Foundation also has been a supporter of Nifty for maybe 20, over a little over 20 years. And they also have done the same thing, right? So it's, you know, either we come to the classroom and talk to students about our experiences, or we bring them to our offices so that they can see themselves and picture themselves in those offices in the future, if that is the path they want to choose. And then also understand, you know, this Nifty teaches the mindset and the tools, but the mindset is so important, no matter which which career you choose, which department you end up being in, it's just a, a natural thing that you're going to be using every day. And it really reinforces our work when we do those things. Beautiful. Now, uh, it's often be, uh, been said that, you know, there are people out there who are excellent cooks, excellent chefs, but they should not necessarily open up a restaurant. So what what is the certain adage that let you know the person has the skill on one hand to let you say that have their product actually be successful but they don't necessarily have that mindset what are, what are the things that you try to identify in them anyone yeah I'll yeah, and, and and I'll let I'll let Tony and uh Lily also jump in but you know one thing uh that we really try to stress is you know we we really go this pathway of entrepreneurial mindset and mm. you can adapt that mindset to be an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, mm. right? And, and an entrepreneur is adapting entrepreneurial skill sets, right, while working for someone else. And we've seen the impact and effect that has on the world of work, right? And so we don't we don't necessarily say at the end of our program, our students, our college students, uh, our alumni, you have to have a business. That's the picture of success. Mm. Um, you know, there are some who start businesses. 
there are some like one student, you know, uh, <laughs> one student I saw, he said, um, he said, hey, Nifty, he saw me with a Nifty polo shirt. I, I was I was in L.A. and I was new to L.A. And he goes, he goes, hey, I know Nifty. I took you guys when I was in 10th grade. He was oh, graduating yeah. as a senior. And he said, you know, what? it's because of that program. I, I, I got interested in going to college. I'm on my way to college now. Right. That's success. Nice. That's a win. Right. So there's so many ways. Right. That the, the curriculum and the content could could impact. And I'll say this last part. You know, we in the curriculum, we we ask the students to think big, start small, think global, <laughs> think global start local. Right. And so, um, you know, what could you do today to start your business tomorrow? So and we we ask them to think about those levels, those tiers of where's my best starting point? You know, where's my where's my 1.0 version? Does my 1.0 mm -hmm. version have to be the restaurant? No, it could be. It could be catering. It could be this one item I sell. So we we really want them to think of in a progressive state, so that they can actually do what they're what they're building. Um, so that's just a quick answer to you know a lot of the things we kind of think through when we want students to when we're thinking about how to help students uh, really really work through and and navigate through all those thoughts. Beautiful, beautiful. And any anyone else? So uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add to that. Uh, it was when he's like, "Some are good bakers. You shouldn't have businesses." Some adults should not be out here having businesses. Let me tell you. <laughs> I've been teaching middle school kids, and I'm just like, dang, where'd you come up with that? Better at math, better at finance than I could ever dare to be at. However, um, I think it's really about, you know, Nifty teaches all these different stepping stools to uh, not only looking into the future, taking risks, uh, but being more of the aspect of like, okay, you have this great idea and miss tony is great at ideation i was like let's change the world however it comes about like the execution aspect of it right mm. and and really mm. understanding and the beautiful thing is partnership and yes. understanding yes. that that the balance of business partners and associates you know and people that are really there to support you and help you and understand that being an entrepreneur doesn't necessarily that like, you have to do everything on your own Right. right. And I think that right. that's the biggest thing that entrepreneurship is really about a community and a network, which is why Nifty is network for teaching, you know, mm. entrepreneurship, because it's about not only teaching our students about entrepreneurships, but giving them mentorship, giving them internships, giving them the opportunity to really see about finances, social media marketing, digital science, all of that background stuff that you don't necessarily have to do on your own. And I think that a lot of the times as adults, uh, we close ourselves off to know I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do that. And it's almost embarrassing to ask for help, which is the beauty of when you start teaching students at a very young age middle school high school and even into college asking for help and being able to you know put yourself out there and saying you know what i don't understand this how do you do that or looking for support or really having that opportunity to come to you and say you know what i need help with this and then being mm. able to give those resources out to people um and either some people are really good at baking but are really bad at math and finance and i'm <laughs> like maybe you should not handle that part maybe maybe let's give that to someone else you know but i think that that is beautiful that um, uh, you know, that balance of you don't have to do everything on your own and there's other resources out there to help you and support you. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so Pablo, Wonderful. what, do you, oh, what yes, are you opening up your lounge? <laughs> just, just, just uh, I, 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 I don't think I'm going to do a lounge. Uh, there's too so much overhead uh, out here. Rent is very expensive. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it leads me to the next question which um, I feel like anybody at Nifty can answer, but maybe Liliana. Um, what is the bread and butter or what are the main industries uh, that you have access to when it comes to corporate engagement? And, um, you know, are there any, are there any uh, mission statements that you essentially like to follow and any criteria that they have to meet to be able to work with Nifty? Yeah, of course. Um, so we, you know, a lot of our corporate partners are in finance, um, banking industry, and then mm. we also have tech, like we talked about, you know, with PayPal, SAP, mm. um, you know, some of our largest partner um, include the City Foundation, Santander, um, mm. MasterCard mm. in the past also has done so and continues to be a great partner of Nifty. And all of them have um, 
their own sort of mission in, in the world too, which is really support youth and help them with their career paths. And that brings, you know, volunteerism. It's not just the sponsorship um, or the support of NIFTY's programs. It's also mm -hmm. the, we're bringing in our employees to support this, right? You're, you're offering time, you're offering um, your funding, and then you're also offering this kind of brand, right, to NIFTY as well. Um, which then helps, you know, alumni like Tony and others who maybe they don't start their business and participate in one of our programs, but they went to PayPal and they were able to ride on a scooter and meet a really cool person who then became their mentor. Um, and they're now, you know, looking at cybersecurity and other careers for themselves. And so that those little exposure experiences really help them think about this is what I like. This is what I'm really great at. And then I learned, you know, communication and I learned, um, you know, future orientation with Nifty. And I learned these little pieces of the mindset that I'm really excelling at. And as I think about my future versus here's the career that I want and here's what I need to do to get there. Um, and so when it also comes to, um, you know, some of our corporate partners, you know, they do support our curriculum as well. So if they have really great tools that they do and training for their own employees, they also offer that up to Nifty and say, this might be great for students. So, you know, one partner who does that really well with us is Intuit. Um, Intuit has, wow. you know, Mint, they have TurboTech, they have um, their design thinking and design thinking is their like magic sauce, right? Is what they talk about. And they helped us build a design thinking curriculum that ties with ours, right? And so teachers are then trained to be, uh, to teach design thinking to students in the classroom using those tools that Intuit gave us and the trainings that they've had with our teachers. Um, and so there's multiple ways that, um, you know, corporations support us. Um, and it's not just about that funding. It's also like, how do we build a really mutually valuable uh, partnership that supports the mission of both um, organizations? And then also, you know, at the end of the day, what do teachers and students need, right? Um, mm. What do we really need to do this? And if we're creating entrepreneurs, um, you know, or helping them get there, right? What What exactly do they need? Is that investment? And so then, you know, as you think about a partnership, you're thinking, okay, well, you know, these, these folks are really interested in supporting under-resourced entrepreneurs, right? We know that a majority of Black Latin entrepreneurs are not getting the funding they need, and they start with credit cards, and they start with, um, you know, savings and, and you know, they just don't have the the resources that others do. And so if you want to help that, how does Nifty help you get there, right? And so here's our students, here's our alumni who are starting businesses, here's our programs that support them. How can you as a PayPal, how can you as a, you know, a city support them with funding, um, you know, mentorship, et cetera. Uh, and so really lining up those those priorities for both or the organizations that ultimately end up helping our young entrepreneurs is, is kind of what I do every single day. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, in, indeed. And you know what? I, I mean, certainly we, we know that the experience of, for the entrepreneur is unique. You know, uh, regular, as I say, wage earners do not have that same type of uh, mindset. So I so I definitely need need to know, like, in terms of when you've made up the decision that this is what you want to do, uh, you let them know that there are resources and or mentorships available out there that they can tap into? Well, we try to do it while they're in the program. So if we're able to bring them to a corporate office or bring the corporate volunteers to the classroom, lately we've been doing a lot of Zoom, we do that. Um, if we're able to get them to a conference or something like that, we do that. We also, you know, let's say there is a Nifty board member who is in that specific sector that they want to be in or students are interested in. And this is a student who, like Tony, you know, has stayed in touch with Nifty and has let us know this is where we're going. We try to connect them to um, mm -hmm. that board member to help them create that relationship. If that board member is not their mentor, they can connect them to other people. And so really it's it's using the network as we can, um, as Tony says, to, to support our students. And again, you know, we have the alumni network, which um, Kenny and our colleague Ani lead, and on there we put resources. So if you're going to college, there's a scholarship section. If you want career things, if we have, um, you know, internships that our partners are saying, hey, if a Nifty student applies, we'll take a better look at it, right? we have those kinds of internships uh, there and we're growing that as we continue to work with partners. And so the more that um, we continue to grow those pieces of the alumni network where students are like, oh, I can go back to Nifty and see what they have for me. That's what we're really trying to make sure students know are available. And then during the program, just getting them as much exposure as we can. Excellent. And, and, and please tell me, Lily, um, that in terms of, uh, let's say the co corporations, right? 
they they are national in terms of the outreach that you have? Yeah, so my role specifically does a lot of national and global, um, but our our teams have a local development director as well. And so they have local partnerships too. So there are some, uh, you know, banks or some um, other corporations in, you know, like Texas, for example, who specifically support students in Texas. Same thing mm. for Florida, they specifically support students in Miami or, you know, we do have location-based supporters. Um, and so that really, again, it's it's our job as development directors to really think about um, what what best aligns with that partner. And if they have a national footprint or multi-regional, then we work as a team to say, OK, well, maybe we can expand their support multi-regionally. And what does that look like um, and create something that's really valuable um, for our students in, in multiple regions? Gotcha. T Tony, please tell me about your business and, and what when was the light bulb that went off in your head and you said, you know what? This is what I want to do. And what and what is the business, please? Look, that's a great question. There's many. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, that that's once you get bit by like the the bug <laughs> of entrepreneurship, then just like I want to do everything. Um, so in high school, and I think that this is what I'm more famous for here at Nifty and a lot of the other regions. Um, it was in high school, I created a sleep. So it was a server. Mm. And as a server, you get blisters, you hot plates, all of that good stuff, you know, mm. part of the part of the job. I created a heat resistant sleeve that wow. protected your forearm, um, had it manufactured, um, customized a couple of them for like airplane engineers, hairstylists. And so that was really the grand aspect of it. Mm. But then it turned out that I wasn't really passionate about that, right? And so I sold that idea off and gave that patent off. And now currently I've done a lot of different things from like arts and crafts and products and services. Currently, my passion is social entrepreneurship. So mm, not only mm -hmm. am I teaching about entrepreneurship, but to me, it is more important uh, to do work as a consultant. So I okay. work with either startup companies or, you know, small businesses that are really just starting up and teaching them about the concept of sustainability, about uh, social, cultural, environmental impact. Mm. It's very important for, for me not to only think about, okay, I want to create a business and make money. But to me, it is more important to teach about, okay, that's great. That's perfect. We're going to start off there. But let's start off from the gecko of having that mindset that you're not making money from your people, but making money with your people. Wow. So I think that that's important to me to say, let's start a business, but let's give back. Let's give back to the community. Let's give back to the environment. Let's, you know, educate people on your culture, not only make money out of it, but you know, communicate and and build a community of that and support each other. Um, and then the concept of consulting with bigger corporate companies of what does sustainability actually look like? Uh, what does environmental impact really look like? And really understanding those concepts of, you know, as of right now, as an example, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. And now everyone is going to be, you know, taking ownership or, you know, trying to get involved. But where do you cross the line from misrepresentation to actually mm. giving back and having a social impact and really representing that and giving back to the community? Don't only take my colors and my flag and my culture and make money out of it. What are mm. you actually doing to give back to my culture and my community? And so that's really the consulting work that I'm doing, because I think that it's important for representation it's important to you know have the right type of language behind it and the um respect really mm. about doing uh taking things from other cultures and not trying to just make money out of it uh but really putting that respect admiration and, and pride behind what you're making money out of so that's what the consulting work that i'm currently doing and i think that that's what really brings passion to me because mm. it has to do more of like that educating um and that educator in me but really the entrepreneurship aspect of okay i can teach you how to do a business i can teach you how to do the social media aspect of it but now let's really think a bigger concept of making money with your people, for your people, and giving back to your people. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Kenny, what about uh, what about Nifty really resonated with you that you said, yo, I need to be a part of this team. They're doing some fantastic work. I need to be there and a part. No, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's in New York, you know, while I was in New York, I was a consultant for Nifty mm -hmm. probably for about 10 years. And one of my first consulting gigs with Nifty was right there in Harlem. Um, mm, where at? 
uh, well, it was with the Allen Houston Foundation. Ah, yes, um, indeed. Mm -hmm. And we actually ran a program for 18 to 24 year olds uh, who wanted to be entrepreneurs. And this experience actually embedded, you know, was part of the early experiences that helped me to say, like, I want to be a part of this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, as a consultant, owning a business in New York City as a consultant, I, I did as much work for Nifty on that side as possible. I trained uh, educators uh, in the in the tri-state area, but mm -hmm. acro across the country, and uh, also went out of, went out of the country and taught people in China and India about you know entrepreneurship education. And guess what? Don't don't matter the country you go to. Entrepreneurship <laughs> thinking and language uh, is 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 similar. The world is small, you know, in <laughs> terms of what people are trying to figure out. You know, they're trying to figure this out all across all across the globe. And this summer, we had the privilege of going to uh, Switzerland. Uh, that, you know, with one of our partners and talk about entrepreneurship education. And and again, it's everyone's talking about the mindset. Everybody's talking about how to be social entrepreneurs and environmental nice. entrepreneurs and how to give back. So that was a really, you know, telling thing. I didn't really expect, you know, to to be this far in the journey with Nifty. But I'm mm. so glad I'm so glad it, 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 it morphed into this. And what, what keeps me here is that full circle, right? Like, you know, individuals like Tony who took Nifty, you know, almost, you know, eight, 10 years ago is still heavily involved. And we have several stories uh, of, of individuals who come back and say, hey, I was sparked, you know, and exposed, you know, now I'm ready, you know, do you have resources? And so, you know, we, we, have, a, we have an incubator we, we started a few years ago. It's an online incubator for, for those individuals that come back who were in our Nifty community and say, hey, I'm, I'm ready to go further in my business. So I'm ready to start that business that I learned in the program. Um, it's called the Founders Forum, and mm. we, take, we take on, you know, a, a cohort every year and um, we recruit, um, you know, an advisor for each one of those businesses as they migrate towards an opportunity for, an, you know, for a $12,000 investment uh, mm. or, a pool, or a pool of money for, for their businesses. Um, and, 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 you know, in terms of those volunteers across the board with Nifty, you know, we look for, for not only corporations, but individuals who, who look who look like those 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 uh <laughs> participants th those are uh, students of color right like we want we want a diverse uh group of volunteers so we we recruit entrepreneurs from the community um mm -hmm. you know who, who might own businesses we recruit business professionals uh that you know may not be a part of a large corporation they just want to give back we had about mm -hmm. 25 2500 or so volunteers last year uh, they gave about, you know, in, in, in total, it was maybe over 13,000 hours. Uh, Lily, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was quite a bit of people who, who just jumped in and say, hey, I just want to help, you know, the next generation get to that next point. So we, we have these resources for alumni to come back. We've expanded our opportunities, you know, in the community college space where we work with colleges now to, you know, offer Nifty as a, as a program in the college class, as a college class, intro to business, but also like their, you know, if they offer, um, if they do like a community business program, mm -hmm. uh, they adapt it there and also workforce development agencies, you mm -hmm. know, that that serve the community. Right. And just offer entrepreneurship to the community. We're now able to like, you know, kind of rest in those areas as well. So uh, so it's across the board. I think we've really expanded the way we've you know reached the community uh, as a whole. So those parents of those young people now can have an option right to to be a part of nifty we get that so many so many of the parents go hey i wish i had this when i was younger right? <laughs> where can i go where can i go to get this right and so we've we've uh you know heard those demands over the years now we have options you know more options for the the whole family to be a part of the the nifty journey wow wow and, and so funny because uh uh tony i saw while kenny was talking that some stuff was kind of resonating with you uh, uh what what points that uh kenny brought up Re really resonated. T tell me. <laughs> so I think that it's it's cool to see the the alumni aspect of it because he was uh, part. Uh, he was ha he had the opportunity to go to Switzerland. It was funny, and I was like, "Why don't you take any of us?" And I think that I'm the instigator. Mm -hmm. I'm the one at Nifty who's going to always known for my saying, "I rather say sorry than ask you please and thank you." And so I get in trouble all the time. And I was like, I'm the instigator. And Kenny is like, Kenny, you should take alumni next time and bring the opportunities. And so I think that that's now embedded into me. Every time says, it's like, think of the alumni, think of the programs, you can take them. Um, about the experiences, not only for the trip and stuff like that, but really the connections to know that sometimes a lot of the 
students that take nifty really think locally and mm -hmm. i was like yeah we have regions and stuff like that but when we really start to step back and see the impact that nifty has globally and the mm. experiences that you can have the network the connections the friendships that you can make it it's really wild and it's crazy and when he talks about founders forum um i think that that's what the alumni program really is all about because it's not only it's crazy to see how people just help each other and mm. you're competing founders forum is a competition and you're trying to compete for money you know and i want more and i have plans and stuff <laughs> like that um and it's kind of like the competitiveness in mm. in the aspect but it's also about you know what i understood that a little bit more i can help you with that or you know what i did this in my business maybe you should try to apply it or you know what i really like that concept let me try to apply it in my business so i think that it, it, it's always really exciting to hear how we've developed and grown uh, more importantly how we started this community within the alumni entrepreneurs and and it's crazy to see where it can take it mm, excellent um you know what uh lily you also were nodding your head what was resonating with you I mean, the for for Kenny sticking around so long. Kenny trained me um, in the <laughs> curriculum when I joined Nifty wow. in 2014, um, and I was on the New York team and I was on the program team. And so, like for me, it's seeing that um, that that like confidence that just like pops into the student, and they're like, you know, I don't have any ideas. I'm not this right, and then you see them like, oh, well, I can actually do this. And I have a partner now. So like playing off of each other of learning, you know, some person, one person is really great at the math and the financials. And so they're in charge of that. And then they go and they present it. And they're so proud of, you know, not only just learning, um, you know, entrepreneurship, but just being able to stand in front of a room of people you don't know and present that and then continue to work harder to be able to get that funding that you need to either launch your business and some students use it for scholarships and that's you know it really is kind of like you're building your own success right and so those opportunities like kenny is talking about are so important um for our students to like just know that they're out there right um i think the the you get stuck in like this is school and this is what i have to learn and for us specifically, like, you know, being a Latina also, it's like education. And so I've always focused on education. I am, I, my comfort with risk is one of our, our things. It's just not there, right? Um, so just like you, every two weeks, get my paycheck, great. How can I help other people not feel that, right? And know that they have this value they can offer the world and make money off of it, like Tony said. And so that's what I really love about, you know, the work that we do and continuing to, you know, just offer opportunity and then make sure that they know what these opportunities are. Because sometimes you can say, yeah, you can win this funding, but like, how, how do you get there? And what do I need to do? And how do I practice? And who's going to help me? So bringing in, you know, those volunteers that are going to help them, bringing in um, people who then become part of their family. And so they're there cheering them on at nationals or cheering them on in their regional competition, taking time off of work to be with them. Mm, excellent, excellent. Wow. So uh, you know what, uh, Pablo, I, yes, I, I saw I saw the wheels in your head <laughs> move, moving. So tell me what's resonating with you, man. Um, I feel like this is such a great program that again, I... <laughs> okay. Um, are there is with such a great program? Are there any barriers to entry when it comes to getting into schools? And you know what city? Um, or areas do you like to specifically target to work in? So we work in a lot of major cities. Um, New York was like our home base. That's where our founder started the program. Um, we, we run into other companies who do the same thing we do, other nonprofits who do the same, same programming we do. And so if a school already has that, that's great. We move on to the next one. Um, some some states are actually really friendly to entrepreneurship education and they already want students to have, you know, this design thinking certification or they want the students to walk out with a QuickBook certification. Or now we have the entrepreneurship and small business one. So schools that are career and technical schools and really want students to graduate with a certification um, really are, for, are, are interested in entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship also fits all the different lines of, uh, you know, uh, apprenticeship programs that career technical schools do. So if you look at like, um, you know, some high schools in New York City have up to 15 different lines that students can think about from healthcare to mechanical work and those kinds of things, entrepreneurship can fit in every single one because they can have their own offices, they can have their own shops. 
Um, and so being able to fit that entrepreneurship um, program or class within the, the other work that they're doing. So whether it's technical or other aspects, so those schools are really friendly. And then there are some other states who want middle school students and who want um, high school students to just have that business knowledge and that experience. And, entrep and Nifty's entrepreneurship course is really friendly. Um, it's really fun. It's so engaging. We call our teachers, you know, they're educators, but they're also kind of guides in the classroom. So the more students mm. can learn themselves, it's great working together. So a lot of the times they're doing many projects that are building up to this larger business plan. And it's not a lot of lecturing. It's more of like, here is a concept. Now let's practice it and see what it's like in, in this practice uh, you know, program. And then go on and, and build that. What'd you learn from that? And then now let's apply that to your business plan. So it's super project-based. And so it's really fun for students to take all of that business knowledge and learn it in a really practical way. Excellent, excellent. Wonderful, and you know, wonderful. And you know what? Uh, the Night Watchman, uh, I don't think he's a nifty graduate, but I do know he's a, a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. So, uh, uh, Night Watchman, you had a, a beautiful nine to five uh, gig, you know, working for a major financial institution. What made you say, hey, I want to do entrepreneurship? Um, very simple. I didn't feel like my contributions were being valued at the level that I wanted to value it. And I felt like the, the freedom. Uh, you know, you you see uh, uh, Tony's enthusiasm mm -mm. when you realize, OK, there, there's a higher level of responsibility. And I, I hear you, um, uh, DJ Leroy, when you talk about uh, getting the, the weekly two week check. Um, but once you get past that and you understand that um, you're not beholden to somebody else uh, setting your schedule, you're not beholden to um, uh uh, reviews someone else saying what what you know how much more should you make mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. but uh, what i wanted to ask our panel and first of all i think nifty is the is the way of the future because um, more and more people are going toward the entrepreneurial route especially coming out of the pandemic so i wanted to ask kenny and liliana about what are the changes that you've seen now um, post pandemic, whereas more people are resigning from jobs and looking for entrepreneurship and how has entrepreneurship changed as a result of a combination of the pandemic and technology? Uh, and what, what are the differences that you guys are seeing now? Yeah, there's a, there's a much greater demand, you know, in the post-secondary realm, you know, what a lot of, a lot of people have been thinking about, um, you know, is school the way to success, right? And so some of the colleges have been telling me that uh, students have post-pandemic have dropped out um, and rethinking, like, what is it that, you know, what's going to bring me that that happiness, that joy, that security, um, that flexibility, that ability to dream and think. Um, and so there's been a demand, you know, on that end to say, you know, as as some some post secondary institutions have have said, we have we have business principles, we have a business program, we don't have an entrepreneurship program, and what what they mean by that is, you know, um, you know, help us to uh, shape, you know, how to help help our constituents dream and think and have an environment where they can see possibilities um, or or these options, and so the program just. You know, since the pandemic, we've we've also been able to partner with, uh, you know, here in LA, we did about almost thirty workshops for entrepreneurs locally, um, you know, who were either running businesses, uh, were on pause because of the pandemic, who were impacted greatly, uh, and we were sharing resources on how to bounce back post pandemic uh, with partnerships here on the ground, um, here in Los Angeles. So. Um, so, and, di and the digital world also really changed the, the landscape. We've, we've, uh, you know, Nifty is now almost completely digital. Um, mm. we, we had started, we had invested some money, um, you know, prior to the pandemic to go in this trend when the pandemic hit, we just, I mean, we just, it just was like, you know, um, we were set up for, you know, to navigate it because we had, we had created a, a, a platform for our, all of our curriculum to be on. So. Um, so you no longer we, we now have the option of kind of, um, you know, you know, doing Nifty in, in even more ways now, which is what the 
what the market really needs, right? It's to, to have that flexibility and entrepreneurs having that access in ways that are convenient to them. So, um, so that's some of the changes that I've seen, uh, you know, since the pandemic and post pandemic. Lily, I don't know if you want to add a little bit more to that. Right. Um, I can add from it from so many different ways. Um, but one way I'll start is, you know, uh, Babson College, which has a great entrepreneurship program and also a scholarship for Nifty students. And also we have someone on the board like they just shared with us um, this week. Their global entrepreneur monitor um, report, which told us, right, like over the pandemic, when you would think maybe you wouldn't see that many that much entrepreneur activity, we actually saw more people try and start businesses. We saw more students, more youth be interested in that part of um, their careers, right? Doing more of, of their own thing um, than, you know, signing up to work with another a corporation who may or may not have room for you in the future or may or may not have this job for you in the future, right? Are you learning right now? What, you sh what you're going to need in the next 10, 20 years, right? Always thinking about that upskilling. And so that increase in entrepreneurship interest tells us there's going to be an increase in entrepreneurship education requests, right? And so as Kenny's saying, like getting from post-secondary workforce, you know, middle schools, high schools that really want to help students really understand what is entrepreneurship, how can they become an entrepreneur, and then understanding their passions and how that can fit into, into you know, their future success. And when you think about um, schools, right, and when we had to, the school had to pivot to remote learning, a lot of teachers did not know how to teach through Zoom. A lot of teachers did not know how to th teach through Google Classroom, right? Us being able to have our curriculum online was step one. Um, then working with teachers, like, they don't have enough iPads. They don't have enough, you know, headsets. Like, what, what can we do to support that? And so asking some of our partners, hey, do you have extra headsets that we can send out to teachers to be able to participate in volunteer experiences? Like, and being able to, again, tap into the, our network of resources to see how we can support. And then basics of, hey, let's get all our teachers together and help them with running Zoom and help them with recreating Nifty's um, you know, projects that are super fun in the classroom and they have to work in groups, recreating that for a Zoom environment so that it's still fun and engaging, um, which is really hard to do. And so, re you know, it was a lot of, you know, upskilling and working with teachers um, to get them to that point and then just listening to them vent about all the issues they're having, right? So how do we take some of the pressure off of them to say, well, let's change your pacing guide and make sure that you still get students to learn these pieces of the curriculum, but maybe we skip these others. And so really working um, with our teachers has built stronger relationships as well. So I think out of the pandemic, there's a lot of things we can we can think about negatively, but there's a lot of things we learned as a Nifty team to be entrepreneurial ourselves and just kind of like make it work. Um, and, you know, in the future, now that now this has really changed the mindset of many people. And so how do we then also fit into what people are expecting success to look like in the next couple of years? Mm, mm, incredible. So, uh, Tony. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, my question is probably for everybody here, <laughs> um, including Night Watchmen. Um, as part of, as part of Nif Nifty's curriculum, um, being that, you know, we want to create and help uh, develop the entrepreneurs of tomorrow, as well as the ones that are existing today. Um, does any part of the curriculum tap into the fact that um, as a small business owner, you and, and as a, you know, an entrepreneur, you get to keep a larger slice of the pie mm. when it comes to what you make. Um, and we're talking taxes now. <laughs> You no, know, absolutely. I think that message of ownership, right, is was a part of the foundation of why Nifty became, you know, came about was to the, the founder really wanted uh, students to understand the opportunity to own what equity is. Um, and you and know, this is Steve, right? Steve Mariotti. Yeah, you got so, it. OK, uh, mm -hmm. so Steve Mariotti. Right. So that's that's always been a part of the uh, the essence of, you know, what, what can you create? that you can actually, actually own. Um, and uh, when when he would have students do their numbers and we would, early on, we would uh, help students with their numbers or think about like, what would you pay yourself? Um, there was mm. always this calculation of, well, what's the minimum wage? Add a, <laughs> add a dollar or two to that, right? Because the concept was, you know, to your point, Pablo, where it was like, hey, everybody in the household has to go to work, right? And so the concept was like, all right, let's keep that concept. But what would what would this look like if you work for yourself? 
you know, pay yourself a dollar or two more than what you would have gotten at McDonald's or whatever, right? And so mm. this this understanding of of ownership and equity uh, and walking with owning your ideas, right? Like mm -hmm. you came up with this idea, um, you own that. You know, what could you yes. do with that? You know, that's that's uh, in the essence of a lot of what we a lot of what we teach at and if. Nice. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Night Watchman, how we doing there? Um, I think we probably should start wrapping up. Um, first of all, I want to say it's a great panel. Um, it's great to hear that Nifty, um, they say, eats their own cooking, uses <laughs> the, the things that they teach internally as well as externally, and shows not only sustainability but adaptability. Those are the two I think, you know, some of the most important uh, qualities that entrepreneurs have to have because, uh, you know, it's such a fluid environment out there. But it's, um, you know, in, in many respects, it's reflecting what's happening in the workforce because, mm. you know, mm. what people were expecting, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Curtis and I grew up in an era where, you know, people thought they could get a job and work for, you know, 40 years for a company and, and get a gold watch at the end and retire. <laughs> and uh, and now it's like we're we're at a place where uh, the jobs as we know it are not only are they disappearing, but people don't want them as mm -hmm. much, you know, because there is not the uh, the um, the stability that 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 used to be occur in the workforce is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So some people are finding more stability and uh and better life choices from being in the entrepreneurial uh space absolutely so you know what I, i'd love to have some uh closing comments from one and all um uh, let's say uh tony you want to start it off of course well first of all thank you for having me thank you for just bringing us uh, Felicia de la Independencia Mexicana. Uh, so you are right. Today is Independence Day for Mexico specifically. Yay! It is celebrated. It is. <laughs> it is. It is celebrated usually at midnight on the fifteenth. So at, wow. at at midnight on the fifteenth, the bells are rang in a, nice. a cathedral in uh, Mexico City, and that that kind of announces, oh, it's Independence Day. Uh, nice. And then it's today's a big celebration, and so there's going to be lots of food and drinking and music and stuff like that. So. <laughs> wherever it is that you are because i'm pretty sure que va a haber candela. in one place or another there's probably a party so you know uh we're good at that uh but not only that you know thank you so much for for bringing us here and i think that as a parting words uh i think whoever out there is listening understand that success looks completely different to anyone whether it doesn't matter your background and stuff like that it doesn't matter your age the imposter syndrome you know will always kick in but there is no no specific limit of what success looks like entrepreneurship there's not because we teach entrepreneurship that doesn't mean that there's only one way to do it there are many ways and routes that you can go about it success will look different for for everyone but you are surrounded by people who will always be there to help you and to support you. So thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to have a platform to share that with everyone. So, uh, you know, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Kenny. Yes, so, sir. All right. Yeah, I totally appreciate being here today. Just continuing this message. It's been 35 plus years for Nifty as an organization. Mm -hmm. And it's still the striving for, for transformation, right? If you look into our communities, uh, you know, black and brown communities, there's still so much, so much help uh, and so much resources that our communities need. But also, um, there's also that beauty of like, um, you know, there's a lot already in the community that need, that needs to be brought out, right? Like, it's not always about what you, uh, you know, what what someone can come and, and rescue the community from, right? It's um, <laughs> uh, the community has its own assets, right? They <laughs> They're very, you know, our communities are creative and they're and they're innovative, right? And so, um, and so, a lot of times it's a matter of like pointing that out and bringing those skill sets out uh, from from a young age on, right? And so, uh, so continue that work of transformation. And the last thing is community economics, right? Where you know people come together to help each other out to have these outcomes come come about, you know. So, uh, so if 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 anyone's interested. You know, listening. You know, nifty.com, nfte.com. You can go and read a, more about what we do. Uh, my email was flashed on the screen, mm -hmm. uh, and you can learn more about you know our, our, our various programs from the Started Up program, which is our 
post-secondary and, and, and community adult programming to all of our school programs in schools from biz camps uh, during the summer, et cetera. So thank you guys for allowing us to be here today, um, you know, with all of you today. Thank you. A excellent, excellent. Liliana. Yeah, all at right. the risk of not repeating everything Tony and Kenny said, thank you so much for having us. This is such a great topic and timely, specifically for Hispanic Heritage Month. You know a lot of Latinos do participate in entrepreneurship, whether it's a small business they start or a bodega or other pieces of like the community that you see where they are offering their value in, a, in the sense of running a business in your community. And so such a great topic to really talk about. And as Kenny said, reach out to us if you'd like to bring Nifty to your community, if you'd like to see what opportunities exist for you, your your sons, your daughters, your nieces, nephews. Um, we'd love to help in any way that we can. So thank you so much for having us. Beautiful, beautiful. Pablo, closing thoughts. I just want to thank everyone um, here for uh, shining a light on these types of programs that a lot of people might not otherwise know exist, even if they are there. Um, our people are resilient. We're probably one of the most entrepreneurial um, people when it comes to the market share of small businesses in the country. Mm. And, uh, you know, I feel like we're not looking for a handout, but just a hand up. So thank you all for, <laughs> for sharing. Excellent. Excellent. Night Watchman, take us home. So you've been listening to Soul Lounge Primetime on WHCR 90.3 FM, The Voice of Harlem, or you've been watching us live streaming on YouTube or on Facebook. You can always find us on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the radio at 8 p.m. on YouTube and or Facebook. Thanks for joining us. Come back next week. We're here with another great episode. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for our guests for an excellent show. Yes. And thank you, yes. DJ Leroy, for whatever it is you do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Happy Mexican excellent show. Day as well. Yeah, all right. yes. All right. That's right. Get my tequila. All right. Night watch. Yeah, I've, I've got I've got a I'm pouring some Don Julio for you right now. King, <laughs> King. Hello, hello. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> uh, all right, 